just like to make it long and uncomfortable there. Um, I uh, thank you uh, so much for having me. I mean, congratulations. Uh, it's an incredible feat to be in school here, so um, I hope you take advantage of it as much as you can. All my books that there's a deep decency in the American people and a native intelligence, providing they have the facts, providing they have the information. And never has that been more true than with our response to Katrina. During and after Katrina, we just didn't have the information. And the best way to get that information, as you know, is to listen. But city officials didn't listen to their own residents. FEMA didn't listen to their own citizens. The machinery of the response to Katrina was so loud, so unwieldy, that it drowned out the, all the individual voices needing help. And so the response was flawed, slow, misguided and unacceptable. First. Two, have faith. Have faith in your fellow human being. It doesn't have to be religious faith. It can be secular, and more often than not, it is secular. The faith that your help fellow human being is, in almost every fundamental respect, precisely like you, that they want the same things you want. They're trying to do the right thing as you are. Life is hard, and they're doing their best, their best as you are. Your commonalities are many, and your differences are few. Three, take action. There's a psychologist named Philip Zimbardo who did the Stanford prison experiment, and he has a new idea that he's been writing about, about how we are all heroes in waiting, that we all go through life at various stages of rest, but that we are compelled, that our, our, our core says and asks to be put into action, that we are all potential heroes, that we have to be ready, we have to be ready to stand up and do what's necessary and take action when the machinery is broken, individuals need to stand up and add a human element and, and a personal sense of heroism.